All right, hey guys, and welcome to D Kong Racing Stream Edition. We are Catalyst. The Ugh, my usernames. We're Slam Jam and Cam. We're playing through Diddy Kong Racing. How thorough? How whatever? Eh, it's it's gonna be a time. We're gonna play as Conquer. We're gonna play this. We're gonna have a chill time. We're gonna have a chill time. We're gonna play through Adventure One. If there's a free safe spot, of course there isn't. Ah, I got uh, all my names. Uh, bye. <laughs> and this. What do I even say about this game? This is, uh, without needing too much explanation. This is Diddy Kong Racing. This is from, ooh, we don't have numbers, okay. Well, we don't have, we don't have just my name there yet, do we? No, okay. This is uh, a game that came out, I think, uh, in order for like a Christmas release in 1997 or eight. Not too sure. This is uh, one of my favorites. When I talk about my favorite game companies ever, I think it's... Uh, oh, it's not even on the cartridge. It's, uh, yeah, this is on hardware, by the way. Um, so this, if it, it's, uh, it's not looking as great on image, it's because it's on hardware, but N64 emulators tend to be kind of crap anyways, so it's fine. We got our elephant. I don't remember what we're saying, but we got an elephant. He's happy. He's on a magic carpet. Cause this this is a kart racer, the story mode. I'm sure a lot of us know what um, Diddy Kong Racing is. At least I hope you do, cause this is a game that deserves playing. It's always a fan of this one. I became even more of a fan of it when I kind of figured out a lot of its little tricks and stuff. We'll be going over that as we go. I'll be losing my trains of thought. It's not gonna be the best guide per se, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do some things. First off. Like, <laughs> I gotta say that, but I'm gonna be talking in kind of a guide sense, okay. Please note that I have not played this in a while now, so I may not be the best at it. But let's see, uh, what else do we wanna... What? Hmm. Yeah, we're just... I'm not gonna worry too much about how much of, how I'm sequencing this, but... There are some different things you can do. You can go honk at the elephant, he changes your vehicle. You can explore this island, so this is our... I think it's actually the Tiger Dudes. God, am I forgetting his name? Can't fly. Um, it's his island. And the bad things happen. There's like a, a piggy man that's um, being kind of a dick. Taking over. It's got a story mode. Not too many other kart racers I knew that have done that. But I think um, I heard some sort of Crash Bandicoot one did. You can correct me if I'm wrong. That frame rate's not quite as great as I remember it being. But it's fine. This is... Just a beautifully aesthetic game. This is all sorts of nostalgia for me anytime I touch it and is never not a fun time. I think uh, we found all the little secret balloons we can find in the world. So much to go over. It always feels so overwhelming at these, but also just so exciting. So, basically... Oh, is there one up here too? There is too. Oh, look at me. I'm not remembering these entirely. I actually have a guidebook I found for this game too. I might be referring to for fun, if nothing else, between episodes and on the stream. So, um, apologize on the stream if that gets a bit boring, but I can't see myself needing the guide too much. Although it does have hidden, hidden information about the character differences and stuff that the game itself doesn't list, at least to my knowledge. Basically, the idea of this game is uh, we have our hub world that we're still part of, and now we're in Dino Domain. Each of these doors has a different value on it, labeled by balloon. You can not afford to go in this one, say, because we have four. You need five balloons to enter. Good luck. So, there's a lot of things to do within each hub world. So, we're going to be racing through each of these, and technically we could do them in a different order, but um, we're going to be very traditional. And, uh, psych, no we're not. We're going to go into Fossil Canyon first, because I like being different. I always like being different. It's fine. It's fine. So, Kart Racer. The unique thing about this game, not only do you race in carts, but as we saw, you race in planes and hovercrafts. Now, people will tend to go crazy about the hovercrafts and talk about how bad they are, but uh, it's actually my favorite. I'm weird. I'm weird. I'm fully okay to admitting this. I will go over some of these tips I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using here as I um, use them. So first of all, you're gonna want these bananas. Um, bananas will help you uh, get speed. I don't think get better items, but it just helps your overall speed. And we're actually gonna grab these blue balloons, because 
we were actually able to grab two of those. So, first of all, with the boost, a little known fact about this game, because it does get pretty hard and does frustrate people, especially on, like, some of the later levels. There's there's some in particular I'll point out when we get to them, but, uh... What you can do on these, and it does tell you in the game sometimes, but not always, Mr. Um, Taj, I believe his name is, will come in and tell you, um... Whoa ho ho, you can do this. One of the things you can do is if you let go of the gas button, your A button, the entirety of your boost, um, be it one on the ground or be it one that you're using like so, you get a different color boost, you'll notice. If you let go of the button until the flames start to turn into the smoke, you'll actually um, get the optimal boost. So let go, put the gas back on. Let go, put the gas back on. This is actually kind of broken. This makes this game actually incredibly easy for a game that I, too, found incredibly difficult as a child. And uh, I believe the max amount of bananas that actually affect you is 10, but you can collect more. I, I could be wrong on that. I, I, I'm not going to fact check a lot of these things. I can't live on the stream, in fact. But um, I, I'd like to think I have a pretty good knowledge of this game. I actually entered a competition once for it at PAX 2014 and uh, choked in the finals, but did pretty well. Here's a friend Taj again. He's gonna say hello. He's gonna give us a balloon. We'll have five. That's math, folks. <laughs> God, <it> sounds like condescending. <laughs> I'm just being weird. Uh, you'll get used to me and my variety of ways of speaking and energy levels and all that sorts of fun stuff. But uh, oh, we have five. Let's let's sequence break a bit. You see what I'm doing here? Since I went around the map and got some balloons, I can sequence break. There is a feed going in each level. You don't actually have to spend them, but you have to have that as an entry point. I should clarify. So this is Hot Top Volcano. This is honestly one of my best levels. Um, but like, everybody loves the planes, right? I'm not, I'm not super big on the planes myself. Like, they're all right. I love everything about this game, but yeah, the hovercrafts are still my favorite. And the funny thing about this level, for those of you who have played it know exactly what I'm talking about. You can play a hovercraft in this level. Yes, it's a Hot Top Volcano. It's full of lava. You can play a hovercraft in it. You can surf on the lava in your hovercraft. Isn't that just something? See, this, these boosts just get broken. Another thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make use of your R button quite a bit uh, to kind of, in the plane at least, what it's going to do is it's going to like make your turns a bit more crisp. If you use R and B, which is your brake button, you're going to um, you're going to get a really tight turn. So basically you have three degrees of turn. You have turn, you have holding down R, hitting a dinosaur in the face. <laughs> Hearing his reaction late because your capture feed is behind. Oh, I, I, I should also point out that some of my reactions might be a bit delayed just because the capture feed is a bit delayed and there's unfortunately not a lot I can do about that. Alright, so your three types of turn. Just hitting the control stick, hitting R, lets you do a bit more swift, and then R and B, like so. Gets you a really tight turn. It, this stands for most of the vehicles. The difference being with the hovercraft, and we'll get to that, is it kind of like jumps you. You can kind of lap some of the people you're racing here and say, ha, because you're just absolutely destroying them and having the chillest of times. Playing a game that you love. And, uh, that's just how the cookie crumbles, folks. <laughs> I don't know what else to say here. It's it's a fantastic game. I, I'm sure I have stories galore that I'll be broad and Stephen King tangent style off on this direction, that direction, and that's just, uh, kind of what we're in for here. So if you are using me for a guide or you uh, never beat this game yourself, rest assured I can beat this game. I will have some struggles at moments like anybody else, but uh, at least the first playthrough is not too bad. All right, so here, I'm gonna show off our three turns here. So you can also use like your Mario Kart. So if you're using the R button, this, just, this drift just goes on forever. But if I'm holding inwards, it's gonna tighten up the drift. I'm holding outwards, which I gotta find a good spot to. It's actually gonna make the drift bigger. And then you can do your back and forth, which isn't going to build you up boost like it would in Mario Kart, but... The other thing you can do is, same with car, if you're holding the R, and then you press B, you do really tight turns. So, basically at this point you're holding A, B, and R, and you'll keep going, and you'll have the tightest of turns that you can imagine. So, those pesky coin missions that are kind of come along later, and everybody that's played this knows what I'm talking about, are not really going to be a problem. They, they were kind of bullshit as a kid, but once I figured out a lot of these little techs, um... They're really not too bad. It's not to say they'll be easy, but they'll, they won't be too bad. We'll get to what those are later as well. There, there's a lot to go over here, but uh, we're on to Jungle Falls for now. 
Oh. See, you can actually get, uh, there's a bit of timing with the boost at the start there, too. Basically, there's hidden boosts literally everywhere in this game. Oh. <laughs> Let's give that a restart. It's our first failure. I didn't expect to have that so soon. I was actually going to have, uh, that's a lie. I was half expecting it as we were getting up to that part. Because I know it's happened to me before. Okay, if you time that right, you get the blue boost. That's the better one. Green boost is best on the zip tie thing. Zip tie. Uh, green boost also best on just base ass balloon thing. Got a shield here. Not going to be too relevant to me, really. Getting all these bananas is going to be important. Now, I would trap that, but uh, I find the AI tends to not use it, really, so I'm not going to bother. So, as you can see, if you use a lot of your techs and your drifts and you use them all correctly, you can pretty much reach anywhere you need to. Um, I'm not getting too risky there with some of those bananas on the bridge, but uh, I'm really I'm really not too worried. But yeah, I can, you see I can grab some of those, dip my way back over here, not trap that again, because, oh god, there's... There's some oil there. Obviously, oil spills are going to make you slide all over the place. It, it's basically a Mario Kart clone. Um, is kind of the... Oh! The mean way to put it, but... Oh my... Alright. Alright. It's fine. It's fine. You see how... You see the bottom right corner? That's how fine we're doing. <laughs> That's how little that matters that I screwed up. <laughs> no regrets, man. No regrets. The stream lab should be working too. I don't know if it's actually uh, going to come up as a need, but I have it, so uh, that's the thing we might see throughout this playthrough. But for the most part, uh, I've just been meandering around, looking at what video games to play, and rather than playing a new one, I'm deciding to play through something again. And as far as like streaming and recording goes, that's usually the best uh, best served for my my knowledge and whatever. I have a lot more to talk about and stuff I'm familiar with. I find and. Um, I feel like less of a fool when I can actually be good at a video game, because I do shamelessly consider myself pretty friggin' darn good at this game. Hence, it was one of the few games I told my friends that I would enter a competition for. Hey, should it ever exist? And then, sure enough, not long after I say that, uh, PAX 2014 has <laughs> a tournament for it. And I do well. Hey, Dinosaur, what's up? You're kind of in the way. It's fine. It's fine. I know I talked about how I can tech around all that, but uh, it, it, it's fine. Drift? Why am I calling it tech? I don't know. I don't know. I have different words for things. They all mean the same thing. Um, it, they have tendencies to come out at weird times. Damn it. All right. All right, it's fine. We can we can mess up quite a bit and be fine because this game's actually incredibly lenient when you know what you're doing, which actually brings us to another point. Another thing you want to hit up on this level, usually the best way to do it is just, uh, well, I guess that's not too bad. I think it's the first time I've ever actually done it that way. Usually I'll just enter the level, immediately grab that exit, because it's taking you off the course of the race. And not in a good way, really. Oh wow, we're still gonna laugh, people. <laughs> I've never actually got to play through two of this game. There is a playthrough two, a new game plus, if you will, and uh, you get silver balloons in that one. And uh, everything's in mirror mode, so it's, it's one of those kind of things. Now, it may look like we pumped through World 1 here. Now, what you have in the story mode of a game is a boss race. And uh, they have, like, this music in this game. It's all. Is it? It's not Grant Kirk. This is David Wise. This is David Wise, I think, for this game. But either way, good music. One of my favorite songs coming up for the boss door. No, it's not that one. That's another thing we'll get to. There's, there's a lot to do in each world, really. And it's kind of one of the knocks people have on this game, is it, it really makes you play through it like. See, so you end up doing each race about three times, each boss about two times. Then there's a new game plus where you do it all again. So it's six times, four times, etc. But it's kind of giving the game a renewable feel that isn't too bad. And then we get some N64 voice acting straight from the studio itself, I believe. I'm a bit worried about that latency on um, reactions, but it's, I don't know, I don't anticipate it being too reactionary of a game. This guy's really not too tough the first time around. What you want to do, basically, is just uh, get the frick out of his way probably soon here, because he's going to catch up to me. But basically, in this version of the game, unlike the DS one... Okay, this actually is a bit challenging! Alright, uh, I don't want to grab that. Uh, the, the third level of power-up, because each balloon, if you haven't noticed so far, stacks. So now we have ten, ten bullets. And we're gonna hang on to that. In case this guy passes us, we can just missile barrage him. 
and it'll be fine. Um, but the DS game, they just have to revamp that. So the first level is one bullet, second level is five bullets, I think, and then the third level is the homing bullet, which is probably a bit less broken, which is why they did it, but there's a lot of reasons I don't like the DS version. It, it It's still... I don't think the steering's as tight. Obviously, the D-pad didn't serve it as well, but you can play it on your good old 3DS and kind of remedy that part, at least. I don't know if this guy's actually going to pass me. Probably should have gone for the boost, honestly, but... I think I'm used to him passing me, but... Doesn't seem like he will. There is a bit of a not short, not so shortcut there that was hidden in the bushes. The last couple bushes he saw kind of bled through to, to each other. Okay, you're gonna want to start using your drifts correctly here. Oh boy, sometimes the game wants to do that though. Oh god, the frames, the frames. All right, all right. At least you guys gotta see me go a bit FPS on this guy. <laughs> Little trick you can do there too with the ten bullets. It's really overpowered. Is if you shoot it all the way down to one bullet, but hang on to it. You hit the red balloon again, you get a refill of 10 bullets. So you can effectively just keep on having missile barrages throughout the game. Which is not something I... Nah. And win! <laughs> and then I think this is where the tips come up, right? Yes. Try pressing, pressing break, break when skidding. Exactly. So there's some of these little, like, texts that it, it tells you. But they're not consistent. They don't always tell you the same text. And as you can see now, our level... All these doors that previously were... Technically, we were able to enter and re-race any of these, but we didn't. Now they all have values on them. And we can't afford some of them again. Of course. Uh, we can actually head to World 2 now. We could. I'm actually debating on whether or not to do it, but... Uh, I don't know. It really has not been that long of a time within Dino Domain, honestly. Uh, I don't think... Uh, well, I guess the next thing we can do that's new is the little mission over here. So each world will have a little mission like this, and it's going to be some sort of battle mode. Um, this I might fail at a couple times. This one's not my favorite. The ones that are just survive... Hang on. I hate that boost. The ones that are just survive and beat out the other people are, I think, everybody's favorite, myself included. So what you're trying to do with this one is grab these grenades. Techs are going to be wonderful for this. Probably the best way to go about this, honestly, is to... The thing is, they have to sit on the platforms for a while in order to hatch. So what's going to happen is you can see them up in the corner of the screen there, but... Oh, my first one was able to hatch. Sweet. If they're there for long enough, they'll hatch. If they're not, um, people can steal them. I don't think there's any in the center there. I think they will occasionally respawn there. Okay, steal his, and if we get this right, nobody's stolen two of mine. Wow, this is giving me an easier time on both the boss fight and this than I thought it would. But watch, this third one's going to be brutal to get somehow. Pipsy has one. Oh, she's all the way over there. I don't know if I can get to that in time. I think Diddy's going for it too. Yeah, oh, he missed. Okay. Okay, we have this one just in case. Yes, they did in fact steal mine. Okay. <laughs> so matter of fact, and I, 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 I never look for my commentary to be remotely consistent. Pipsy has one again. Okay. Let's go get hers, because you just need three to hatch and you'll win. You're the first to hatch three eggs. That's pretty much it. Another dumb thing they did in the DS mode. Hey, there we go. Another dumb thing they did in the DS mode is you can only play these missions um, on multiplayer. Which is kind of strange. Uh, these boss doors were replaced by draw on the screen sort of map challenges. So you draw your own tracks, which was cool, but they took these out. Except for multiplayer, which kind of sucked. Again, not that I'm very big on that one. I don't even know if that... That one did have weapons and stuff, but it's... You're not really going to use them. So this gets you another collectible that you need for the game. Uh, rareware staple. Cool, you have a piece of the TT amulet. Collect three more? Good luck. Doesn't really tell you what it's for, but... Uh, geez, what is that one for, actually? I'm actually not 100% sure on that one. That's funny. I thought I... thought I knew everything about this game. By the way, you get all those. Uh, obviously, we got a piece of... No, we didn't get a piece of the other amulet. There's another amulet for the whiz pig. Uh, we'll do these in order this time. <laughs> now that I've uh, thrown everybody off and done them out of order. Hey, man, how's it going? It's crystal rules, right? Alright, so we're on the silver coin challenge. So basically, we're we'll about to fight the boss fight again. Then we'll get the other piece of the whiz pig amulet. And that'll start opening the pig statue that we saw on the outside. We'll get to all these things. There's a lot to go over, and frankly, it feels like a mouthful just because, like, 
I'm plowing through these so fast, though. See, we didn't get the, quite the best boost there. But all these coins, I don't remember where these are entirely. So, like, this doesn't look so bad, right? The whole goal here, and this is a big problem people rightfully have with the game. I'm not going to get the super boost there because I want to get this. Uh, is this mode, and myself as a child included, my god, was this brutal. But when you know how to drift correctly, this is not too bad, so. Yeah, you see, I got seven in the first lap, that's not bad. But you do need all eight. You do need all eight, like he said. You need to collect all eight and win! Oh, fuck, he said it. <laughs> and 64 voice acting. It's back in the days when they got their own, I think, I don't know if this game is included in that. I'm not gonna get super boost. Um, I think... It is, though. So you get the little tiki confirmation of go for it. I think this is back in the day where, like, they took their own in-studio people. I know Grant Kirkhope did Donkey Kong for DK64. Wow, am I seriously still gonna lap people on coin challenge? Okay. It's not exactly the hardest coin challenge, but... You know. What are you streaming? Uh, this is on an actual N64. N64 emulators don't tend to be the kindest things. Also, as far as the Taj things, I'll show them off for each level once, but I'm going to skip them the, other, the next time. Just for people wondering. This is becoming so freaking mission matter of fact formulaic, but really, we might do some screwing around somewhere. <laughs> don't put that past me. This is like, I will kind of act like a guide, but at the same time, not really. I'm just going to be playing the game and doing my best to not suck ass at it later. Okay, there we go. I think there's another one. Yeah. So these are kind of almost like a lot of games that do this kind of thing. Uh, I'm trying to think of like Hydro Thunder, San Francisco Rush kind of thing. Either of those actually ring bells for people. Um, yeah, like what they'll kind of do is they'll kind of show you the shortcuts by putting their um, collectibles there. Oh damn, whatever. We'll get that one next time through. Um, but yeah, this is being streamed from an actual N64. I, I should mention though that... Uh, Wonderful plug here, not sponsored at all, but Retro Bit Controller is glorious. They also make, like, actual, like, very... Oh, fuck. Similar remake controllers. Um, but, like, these are actually ones that have, like, kind of thinner... I describe them as PS1 joysticks on them. And it's a lot better. I played through the entire, entirety of Banjo-Kazooie for the first time with this. DK64 again. It's getting a bit worn now itself, but it's, it's not too bad, really. Um... <laughs> I'll, I'll read that in a second. Okay, uh, yeah, as you can see, those little spike things, those are the second upgrade to the green balloons. Uh, bleh. All the green stuff I find is a bit more handy in the water, because you can't exactly see the oil spills, and they, they feel a bit more, well, I guess, no, they wouldn't be any more appropriate in the water. It just, maybe it's just I remember them being the best there. Oh! Jeez, this is, this is not even slightly embarrassing. No, we're good. I don't care. Okay, <laughs> if I'd hit someone. <laughs> All the sounds are delayed in my ear, too. Uh, I'm using a Hapog... Hapog? Hapog 2? HD PVR 2? That my friend lent me. I used to use a Diamond GC1000, but that thing was... Had really annoying quirks. That I tend to like to not remember at this point. Here, let's do Hot Top Volcano. Screw you guys, I'm going out of order again. <laughs> Sometimes, okay, sometimes these coin challenges, there's a very specific reason people don't like them. And we're about to see one here. Because, like, it, it seems like an obvious hiding spot. Look, you can go around back here. It's slower, but you can do it. Why would you normally? But there's a coin back there. I think there starts to be branching path syndrome in a lot of these levels, I'm going to call it. And, uh, you know, the coins are going to be located in different spots. A lot of times, the thing that irks me about this game is a lot of times... Like I was saying, games like this that do that kind of thing, they put them in spots that are convenient to show you shortcuts. Whereas this game, it's like, let's see how out of the way we can put them. Sorry, Dinosaur, I just, I gotta give you a love tap every time on the way. Hey, bye! Okay. <laughs> Keep my plane under control here. Okay, is there? Yeah, it's under this one. So sometimes, like, they'll be put in split paths. I don't think there was necessarily one there before, but, um, yeah. <laughs> Lots of fun on that one. All right, this this purple boost is gonna be a bit insane. I'm gonna save that for a bit because if you use it and you don't use the boost, my god. All right, we're gonna use it in this room here. I don't think I've actually done this yet, have I? Purple boost, go! Holy crap! All right, it's, it's a bit hard to steer that. I wasn't able to hit both the things. Oh well. <laughs> but yeah, not to worry. If you fell in this game hard as a child. 
and you think I might have a hard time, well, guess again. Well, fuck, knock on wood. But, um, <coughs> largely, this is, this is actually a game my friends refuse to play with me, because I, the, the, how badly I'm out, like, lapping the AI is pretty much how badly I out lap anybody else that's played this. Um, or at least, like, I don't know. I was born in 1995 and lived behind the times and still do. I live all, all generations of the game still. Really. So, um, you know, I'm more practiced and played in these kind of things than they were. But this is one I actually played a lot. It's like a five-year-old and stuff, too, in this case. And obviously, every time I, I didn't own it back then, I actually didn't own it until, like, 20, 2010. 20, yeah, no, no, 2010, 2011, unfortunately. So, uh, a lot of times I'd rent it from the store, um, and, uh, I just hoped that, like, everything was unlocked. There's Space World later, spoilers, but, uh, I'd hope it was unlocked. I think it was only ever unlocked once whenever I rented it, but, uh, it was a glorious day when it was that one time. That is awesome, streaming straight from the N64. Yeah, I mean, I like to if I can. Um, I'm not, like, a purist or anything, but, uh, you know, it... There is something nice about playing it on its actual hardware. I have emulated this game before I owned it, but, uh... This one actually doesn't emulate too bad. To be honest with you. Um, I remember there's, like, a lot of issues in, like, the background in the sky and stuff, but, uh... It's nothing too bad. One other thing to point out to the boost, if you are gonna play this yourself... I don't know why I'm still treating this like a guide, but I, I just, like... I'm good at doing that. I'm good at teaching. I don't know, I'm gonna be a teacher. <laughs> I, I, I'm a teacher, I'm a coach, and all sorts of things. I direct, so it's, it's, it's naturally in my blood. Oh, I hate this one! Oh, did I get it? I think I did. Okay. Sorry, I don't get the confirmation noises in my ears. Uh, the, the, the audio I'm hearing, just so it's not picking up the mic from the TV, is the same audio coming from the computer, which is, as we know, like a second behind or half second behind or so. So, yeah, I don't get these confirmation. It might even be two seconds. Long and short, don't play off the capture card footage on computers when you use them. It's usually at least a bit delayed, if not horribly, <laughs> like this. So, again, qual qualify that if my reactions are happening late or early, that uh, is why. It's like some sort of weird-ass time travel thing. <laughs> I know what's going to happen in the future two seconds ahead. Wouldn't that be a power, though? You'd be like the best goalie on the planet. <laughs> But no, no, I, it's all happening live for me, but 